Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be doing a whole lesson on refraction. This one is a bit advanced, and in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the relationship between frequency, wavelength, and the speed of the wave. Right, okay, so before we get going, make sure that you've watched my previous video on refraction from GCSE Physics, it's in the description below, and have a good understanding how refraction works before watching this one. So uh, let's get straight into it with the following diagram. Okay, so look over here, we've got air and we've got glass. Yes, so air, this is my first medium, glass is my second medium over here, and here's the normal to the surface. Don't forget the normal's at 90 degrees to the surface here. Right, we know that a ray of light will travel and obviously hit uh, this point over here, and refraction will take place over here. Refraction will take place. But today's lesson, I want to talk about the frequency of the wave. What's happening to the frequency of the wave? What's actually happening to it? and what's happening to the wavelength of the wave as it enters that new material here. So those are the things I want to talk about. Right, so first of all, when going from air into glass, what do you think is going to happen to the velocity? What's going to happen to the velocity of the wave as it now enters the new material? Well, I always try and explain it in terms of, imagine you're trying to run in air, yes, and then you're trying to then run in glass, yes, obviously it doesn't make sense. If you try and run in glass, your velocity will be lower. So I know that my velocity will decrease, the velocity will decrease. That's what I know, yes? Because I'm going from less dense to more dense. So my velocity will decrease here. Right, okay, but what about the frequency here? What about the frequency? Well, the best way to explain this is by using the following simulation. I've put it in the chat below, it's by FET. Uh, it's the following. Okay, so here, it's a wonderful simulation over here. So we can see the ray of light traveling downwards, hitting it, and look, being refracted closer to the normal, yes, because we're going from less dense to more dense over here. Right, let's turn it on, yes, but now I want the wave model. So rather than visualizing it like just simply like a line, let's look at it in terms of a wave over here. There we go. Right, a bit nicer for us to see here. Okay, so for yourself, try and look at what's actually happening at this point over here. Ignore the reflected one, I don't really care about that, I just care about the refracted one right now. What's actually happening at this point over here? So I'm just going to pause it right now, uh, over here. Okay, right, so now I've just paused it. I'm just going to annotate on here right now uh, a couple of things. Okay, right, so the wavelength, right. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the wavelength. So if you're struggling to see where the wavelength is, these red lines, imagine them as like uh, the peak of a wave. So each of these red lines is the peak of a wave over here. So look, this dot corresponds to that bit of the line, this dot corresponds to this bit of the line over here. So between each line, that is the wavelength. So that is my wavelength over here. So in between each of the little one red line to the next red line, that is the wavelength. We can clearly see that, so as we go from there to there, we can see that the wavelength decreases. Because look, this distance between there to there is now shorter. So the wavelength decreases over here. So we know that the wavelength decreases, and we also know that from before that we're going from less dense to more dense, that the velocity or the speed is going to decrease as well. Right, okay. But what about the frequency here? What about the frequency? So we've talked about the velocity, we've talked about the wavelength, but what about the frequency? I always try and explain it in terms of like a door. Imagine this is a door and it's the people walking into a room over here. First of all, the number of people obviously passing through the door going in will be equal to the number of people coming out over here per second. There will be the same amount passing per second going in and out over here. Yes, they are closer together now compared to over here, they're further away. So what I'm really trying to explain is that the frequency remains the same. So the frequency going in will be equal to the frequency over here out. So the frequency going in is equal to the frequency out over here. So I'm going to put this down over here. So we'll put down frequency in is equal to the frequency out over here. Everyone happy with that? So try and visualize it in terms of the number of people exiting this room per second. It's the same number of people entering this room uh, per second here, but they're just close together now and they're moving slower. Uh, we can also change this then rather than having F in and F out. We can say this is the first material. Yes, so obviously I'm traveling through the first material. So the frequency in the first material will be equal to the frequency in the second material over here. Very good. And then finally, we can use the equation of velocity is equal to frequency times by the wavelength over here. We can now incorporate that into here. So therefore we can say that V1 over lambda one, yes, for the first frequency will be equal to 
v2 over lambda 2 over here. Right, so this equation, loads of people, uh, they often forget it, but make sure that you understand that the frequency going in is equal to the frequency out over here. And now look, it has the relationship between the velocity and the wavelength over here. We can see that this is the reason why as the wavelength decreases on this side, the velocity must decrease as well for this value to remain constant over here. And that's it for another session of Sir Razzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure that you're able to understand where this formula comes from. V1 over lambda 1 is equal to V2 over lambda 2 when you're tackling questions in refraction. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep my channel going and share my content with as many kids as possible. Good luck.